In 2015, we saw an explosion of quadcopters while drones being released to the marketplace. And one of the ones that we were most impressed with was DJI's Phantom 3. Uh, the Phantom 3 Professional shot 4K video. It was stronger and more responsive than the Phantom 2. There was a new app that tethered directly to the transmitter and it had new sensors, a sonar sensor, an optical sensor for stabilizing it as you landed it. Incredible features, we really loved it. So what could DJI do next for its Phantom line. Hey everybody, it's Norm from Tested, and today I'm gonna to introduce you guys to the Phantom 4. The Phantom 4, well, there's only one model this time, has several improvements over the Phantom 3. These are the features I care about, though. First of all, the battery. Battery life, DJI now says, goes up to 28 minutes of flight time. That's almost half an hour. There's also a sport mode that allows the Phantom 4 to fly at up to 45 miles per hour and new optical sensors, new cameras on the front and bottom of the quadcopter allow it to use computer vision for automatic guidance and tracking. We're gonna go chat with DJI to learn how these features work and then test them out ourselves. Hey Adam, good to see you. Thanks Norman. So this is Adam from DJI and Adam, tell me about the Phantom 4. Uh, what's different and new? So Norman, this is the safest, easiest to fly and most fun drone that DJI has produced to date. It has a number of really interesting features that make that possible. The first of them is, of course, it's got five cameras on board. Uh, it's got a lot of imagery input, and for that we put a processor on board to handle all of that, and not just handle it, but make decisions. So we're in the world of machine learning now. It's, it's computer vision. Absolutely, computer vision of, as a first step. What we're seeing here is it has forward-facing optical sensors, it has downward-facing optical sensors. In those directions, it's able to build an image, process an image. You say optical sensors, but we really mean camera. Like I remember the Phantom 3 took some features from the Inspire 1, for example, the optical flow. There's one camera on the bottom, there's also sonar, that let it land by itself. Uh, now you're putting two cameras on the bottom, two cameras the front, so you have stereo vision, and then a processor in here. What does the processor do with that information? The processor is very interesting. So the first thing that I need to tell you about is obstacle avoidance. This is a craft that even with full stick forward, if you're pointed at an obstacle in front of it, it's got 60 degree range, 30 degree range. If it sees the obstacle in front of it, full stick forward, it won't fly into it. It will just stop. It's kind of like a, a parking sensor for that, your car, where it right. tells you based on how fast you're flying, it knows that something's gonna be six meters, five meters, two meters, and then the transmitters start beeping and you won't be able to go forward? That's right, it'll just stay in a hover safely right in front of it. Huh, now you said 60 meters, uh, 60 degrees field of view and 30 degrees of vertical field of view. What happens if there are obstacles outside of that? And what are the limitations of the obstacles it can see? It's, Trees? So it's very similar to a human being. We have a field of view and within that field of view, we're pretty good at dodging or, or go, going over, around, under, whatever, uh, an obstacle. Um, if this craft can see something in that field of, of view, it will make a smart decision about it most of the time. Uh, we don't have sensors and eyes on the top of our head, so we might bump our head into something, and that is a possibility, but generally speaking, if you're flying this craft straight forward, it will see what's in front of it and make a smart decision to avoid it. Human beings also don't run backward or do figure eights and elevate like quadcopters do. So that's that's maybe something for down the road. But right now, if you're flying forward, 60 degrees, 30 degrees, and it can, at full speed, it'll be able to stop? At full speed, it will slow and then come to a hover right in front of it. Um, the distance is effective out to about 15 meters. Mm. Now, uh, there's a difference between normal mode and sport mode. This kind of avoidance system works in the normal mode, which I think compared to the Phantom 3, it's a little bit slower, but you want to max out the speed up to 45 miles per hour. That's in sport mode. Uh, avoidance, the cameras aren't as effective there, but what can you do in sport mode? Sport mode is for enthusiasts, advanced pilots, people who want to get a taste of drone racing. Uh, this is still a big drone for drone racing, but wow, when you see it go, it brings a smile to your face. If you really like to go fast, you're gonna get that tilt 45 degree angle and it just zooms and corners and you'll notice with the braking it's gonna take a, a few meters there to, to come to a full stop and, and reverse direction but it is just so fun and it corners so well. Um, you get the speed not by eating more battery necessarily all the time but you're also getting more speed 
because you are tilting the craft to 45 degrees, it's physics that's helping this move at a higher rate of speed. Mm, okay, and that goes into some of the redesign. The props are also slightly redesigned. The way they mount onto the motors are designed. You don't have it, you don't spin them on like the Inspire 1. No, these are now you just uh, push them on, twist, and they lock into place. It's very, very good for safety at high speed. All right, well, we talked about avoidance. We talked about the new battery life. It's a little bit heavier, it's the sport mode, uh, but the thing I really want to test out today is tracking, computer vision. So how does that work with the five cameras on board? So what happens is, um, preferably, let's say you have a subject who is not moving or slow moving, and you tap on that subject, or you can also draw around that subject. It recognizes a human form and you tap it to start it. And once it has a track on that person, it builds a 3D image. And algorithmically, it's smart enough to know that human beings can turn their head, can turn their profile. They look different when they walk, they move their arms, they move their legs. They will still stay on you. If you're on a bicycle, draw around the bicycle, it will recognize you and the bicycle as a shape and that it changes, uh, changes shape when it changes direction, it might move into profile. And essentially what it's doing is it's staying on you. There's no gimmick here. There's no bracelet or necklace needed. It's following you because it senses and sees you and builds an image of you. Now how fast, what are the limitations of the subject being tracked? Like where can that subject move relative to the quadcopter and how fast can they move? So you're limited again by camera's field of view, but essentially if you're walking at a slow or brisk pace, no problem. Running is fine. Jumping, it will stay on you as well. Um, you can even make it with one stick move orbit around you. This is a move that a, a really trained pilot would find hard to maintain that perfect orbit around you. And this can do it, the Phantom 4 can do it every single time. Um, if you hid behind a table or a fence, it would lose track on you because it just can't see you. And then after a few seconds, it would break off the track and it would just hover safely right where it is. Also, um, if I walk underneath the drone, the camera's gonna go down as far as it can go and then it loses you. But you know, knowing that, generally if you're in front of this drone, moving with the drone, it will follow you. The Phantom 4 is smart enough to know where you are. There's a lot of uh, features on here that allow it to pilot itself automatically with your control, tapping the app, tap and fly. And that's why you're also changing the transmitter. Now there's gonna be a dedicated button to stop it whenever you want. We built this with safety and confident flying in mind, and that's just one thing. If it's flying and you're sort of not sure exactly what's happening, or you change your mind about something and you're not sure exactly what you want to do next, you hit the pause button and the drone will slow to a hover and just stay there until you make up your mind about where to redirect it. And then it also inherits all the features from the Phantom 3 line, including even the SDK, all that return to home features, all that stuff? It, yes, it does. It also has intelligent flight modes. Um, return to home is good. It uh, engages obstacle avoidance on the way back. So that's an added plus and an added safety feature. Uh, we also have some redundancy built in for to make this more dependable, reliable, and, and to make people more confident. We've got dual IMUs and dual compasses on board. Awesome. Well, there seems, sounds like there's a lot to test with the Phantom 4. I'd love to get some of that testing done today. Uh, thanks for sharing this information with us, Adam. My pleasure. All right, so the Phantom 4 has me in its sights right now, and what we're gonna do on the app is select me so it can track me. Let me know when it's uh, tracked over there. All right, so the Phantom 4 is now tracked onto me uh, with the app, and I'm gonna start walking away from it at a very normal pace. And I assume, yep, it's walking toward me. If I do a turn here, I'm gonna turn. Oh, I think it's lost track of me. There it goes. So if it loses track, reselect me. I get highlighted. All right, let's see if this guy can really track me.
let's go. It's a little too fast. All right, as you can see, that active subject tracking didn't work perfectly, uh, but it did regain tracking. It found me again without the user having to reselect me. And as you can see, the obstacle avoidance system is also at work there, indicating how far I am away from the quadcopter. Now, what's really going to be interesting is for cinematographers to use this to do things like have the quadcopter follow someone and then just using one stick on the transmitter, circling around the subject, or even using the other stick to fly further away or closer and doing these kind of sweeping pans. That's going to be really cool as long as you're doing a precise movement. Um, another caveat is that as you walk toward light like the sun, the glare from the sun is actually going to be inhibiting the active subject tracking and you'll be able to see that as I run toward the sun right now. What I'm also going to try to do is activate both the active subject tracking and the obstacle avoidance system. So as I walk between these two flags, you'll see if the quadcopter detects gets too close and then it stops. Pretty cool. So there you have it, our quick hands-on time with DJI's new Phantom 4 quadcopter. A bunch of features in this year's model that differentiates it from last year's, but as you can see, there's still going to be a bunch of testing that we're going to need to do before we can determine whether it's worth the upgrade or even worth buying the quadcopter. The new vision systems, the active subject tracking and active obstacle avoidance systems uh, didn't work perfectly in our quick tests, but I'm going to be really interested to see whether how cinematographers are going to use the subject tracking to film subjects in new and interesting ways, and also whether the obstacle avoidance system is going to be useful for new flyers as well as experienced flyers to fly and give them some more peace of mind, uh, given that the obstacle tracking only works in front of the camera's field of view in that 60 degrees. Now, battery life, that's a big deal. 30 minutes, potentially, of battery life for 28, as DJI says it. I'm going to be testing that heavily, because I think that's a big benchmark for quadcopters of this class and size. And of course, the new sport mode, that increased speed up to 45 miles per hour. That's just a toggle on the transmitter now between that and the normal flight mode. But here's a caveat. The normal flight mode is actually slower than it was in the Phantom 3. And I think they had to do that so that the new vision systems could actually work at that frame rate and at that pace. Uh, but they compensated, of course, by giving you the sport mode and giving it more maneuverability to give you that simulated FPV flight. Now, speaking of FPV, the transmitter itself doesn't have built-in HDMI out. So you're going to need to buy an accessory, I think, in the future if you want to attach it to a headset, an HMD. And the transmitter itself is slightly different from the Phantom 3 model. Um, it has that toggle for sport mode and also the button so you can pause the quadcopter in flight at any time. If it flies off into the distance autonomous, autonomously, you can just press the button, it'll stop, and then you can bring it back home. A couple other features we didn't talk about with the camera's actual vision system. I think it's using the same 4K sensor as the Phantom 3, but what's changed this time is the optics. So the lens itself, which while it has a 94 degree field of view for capturing video, uh, it actually is supposed to be better around, about distortion and chromatic aberration around the edge of the frame, so you're gonna get a cleaner picture. And based on that sample footage that we got back on the Phantom 4, that seems to be the case. The camera can now also shoot at 120 FPS at, um, at 1080p, so that technically counts as high-speed video at 120 frames per second. Uh, the big question now for existing owners of Phantom 3 is whether to upgrade. It is a $1,400 quadcopter, and also for new buyers, whether they want to buy a new quadcopter on the high end with this Phantom 4 or get something from last year that's discounted, like a Phantom 3 Advanced or Professional. Uh, the Phantom 4 is going require a lot more testing. We'll be doing that on the site, but it is available for pre-order now and will come out on March 15th, uh, both on the DJI's flagship stores as well as Apple stores as well. Uh, well, that's it for this video. We'll have plenty of more of gear, more testing, more previews on the site. Uh, like our video, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Hope you enjoyed this one. I'm Norm, and we'll see you next time.